That is some awesome Chiptunes music. Thank you, Chiptunes Win. Or Chiptunes Equals Win for that. For allowing streamers such as myself to use your artist music without fear of DMCA takedowns. Hello, everybody! Welcome, engineers, tinkerers alike, to the Steamworks. I am back on my home turf so that we could do some Minecraft mayhem. I hope that everybody is having a good evening or afternoon, wherever you are. We are going to be having a good time, Mini Dash and I, doing some Minecraft mayhem. So, it's been a pretty good day, I think. Today is the next to last day of the awakening on Death Metal Kyle's channel. Right now, Monocle, the flaming Monocle is, in fact, streaming on Death Metal Kyle's channel. And Kyle will be back from his vacation on or Friday. Friday, so tomorrow will be the last day that I will be guest streaming, which means all of the Dark Souls 3 goodness will be coming back to this channel, and you get to see me die lots and lots of times other than that i've i've been having good times you know doing good things let's go ahead and start getting minecraft up and running we discovered last time that there was an update why was there an update because they added all sorts of new oceany things which we've been using to explore at least mini dash and i i'm currently lost actually out near the ocean I wasn't trying to be lost near the ocean. I actually wanted to get back. Back, I say. Back to my home. Back where I wanted to be. But, unfortunately, I got lost. And here's the game. Let's go ahead and get started. Come on. Load. Yay! Encrypting. It actually encrypts this. Ah, oh, crud, it's raining. I've got to somehow... Get back. It's kind of cool to go underwater a bit. Mini Dash pointed out that there are some better sound effects now when you're underwater. There's also a skeleton that's underwater that's trying to kill me. Which is not good. I don't know how or why. I'm just trying to stay out of the skeleton's possible firing path. So, I'm just staying way the heck up here for now. Until I can find my way back to my tunnel. I'm going to have to move very quickly to get back to my tunnel. Because, as you can see, the sun is going down and I am very lost. Ow. It was a bigger fall than I thought. Jump, 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 jump. Nothing here. You know, like, it's really interesting that I dug the tunnel from somewhere I knew. And I got completely lost. So last time, I dug a tunnel. 
and I dug a tunnel in the side of a mountain that I knew. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep digging that way, I think. But also, I think there's a tunnel above me. But in the meantime, to protect myself from the elements and from unsavory creatures, like skeletons, I'm going to start building myself a little... safety spot, as it were. Not where I wanted to build, but... This is called building across random terrain in order to make your tunnel safe. Essentially what I'm doing is laying a foundation for this tunnel to continue onward into the other mountain range. Monkey Boy! 1092, it's good to see you. Welcome to the Steamworks. I hope that you are having a good evening or afternoon, wherever it is. What have you been up to today? Anything exciting going on? Any riveting activities? Or not so much? Not so much? That's okay. Life cannot always be full of riveting activities. It, it can't. It's just the fact of life. Nope. No, nothing good. Yeah, that's okay. Life is the journey, you know, between the awesome moments and the, you know, less than awesome moments. So that is perfectly okay. You may ask what I am doing right now. I am currently expanding my tunnel from one mountain to another in an effort to protect myself from harm going forward. So that is what I'm doing. I am digging in such a way so as to create a kind of continued artificial tunnel and I'm enjoying myself immensely making my artificial tunnel because this is this is like the best way to explore what you do is you, you create an artificial tunnel and what I'll do is, I'll only, I'll still, actually, I put that blick, blick, brick in the wrong spot. I want every other thing to be a window, kind of towards the middle. Which, you know, may leave me open to some attack, but, but you gotta, you gotta appreciate the scenery, I guess. There we go. And now we'll finish building our walls out. It's a wall! Not the wall! Not the wall! Yes, the wall. All in all, you're just another brick in the wall. Yeah. Classic rock. Oh, yeah.
We don't need no education. Ah, oh, that's a level higher than the other one is. Eh, that's okay. That's okay. We're okay with this. There. I'll put that, I'll chalk that up to good enough territory. <laughs> good enough territory. Well, it is good to see you. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have the side tunnel thing going on. Well, at least I found my way back. So, to give you some overview, I was completely lost. And as you can see, I have a bunch of stuff. I need to make it back to home base. I'm taking out my sword just in case. So, you're going to see I'm going to come out of a mountain... Right here. Hmm, fishies. Hmm, tasty fish meat. Uh, creeper, creeper, run, run, run. Run, fool, run like you've never run before. Or swim like you've never swum before. I don't care, just get away from the creeper. Creepers can't actually swim. I think they sink. They actually have zombies in here now called drowned. That, um, they have drowned zombies that come after you. Making my way back to my home. I seem to be getting good at holding my breath. For the right amounts of time. I'm almost back. Sudden Warrior, great to see you. Welcome back to the Steamworks. As you can see, I'm back on my normal channel for a little while. Well, at least till 6 p.m. anyway. How have you been doing? All right. It is good to see you. My stream on DMK's channel had lots of dying because it's Dark Souls. Dark Souls 3. I've been doing Dark Souls 3 lately, um, and I'm learning what it's like to grind through that. And that will be what we will be playing on this channel from now probably through October. I don't anticipate getting Dark Souls 3 done until October, especially when the first boss took me three and a half hours to defeat, and that was an easy boss, supposedly. Yay, I'm awake. So now I've got to dump a bunch of stuff. Um, I just want to put, like, one piece of coal here so I can cook some fish. Actually, I do have some gold ore, so I think I'll do that. It took you 30 minutes to kill the first werewolf in Bloodborne. Yeah, I mean, they are not easy games. And what I mean by that is, is that they're not, they make sense. All right, I will say that the games make sense. But just because something makes sense does not mean that it's easy to grasp. Especially if you've never played a game in that series or that franchise before. And I saw a comparison. I'm trying to remember what game was it compared to. Dark Souls is compared to like the dungeon crawler um, roguelike games. I saw a comparison between them basically saying that, you know... You just have to play and grind it out and get to know the system. And then eventually you get good at it. But initially, it's just an uphill battle of suck. And my my friend at work told me, he said the other day, he's like, oh yeah, if it took you that long to beat that boss, you're going to have tons of fun with the next boss because the next boss is the casual killer or the casual filter. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, the next boss is the one that they put into place 
to expressly to frustrate people so that they will not keep going on the game unless they're dedicated. Well, I'm either dedicated or I'm stupid. So, um, yeah, we will. Uh, I will definitely keep pushing forward just because I want to beat that. Uh, Kingdom Hearts is Dark Souls with Disney skins. That sounds like something I've got to try at some point. I've never played any of the Kingdom Hearts games. I know, I know, my street cred just went down a bunch. I don't care. Look, I'm playing games as I can. Alright. I am playing. But yeah, Skull Stream is awesome. Yeah. That that being said, I did purchase Slay the Spire last week. I'm looking forward to trying that out. I think I'm going to make that my endless weekend game for next month. I'm making gold bricks. And I got some sugar cane. I don't know what I'm going to do with sugar cane, but I do have sugar cane. I know what I'm going to do with my iron. I'm going to turn it into pickaxes. I'm going to have to get some wood, obviously. Yeah, I mean, uh, Slay the Spire is a game that the guy at work that I call Dr. J kept telling me I should get. So I ended up getting it because I looked at it. It looked like a cool game. I've never really played a dungeon crawler and or roguelike. And so next month is going to be a lot of kind of dungeon-y roleplay type of games, both between Dark Souls 3 and between Slay the Spire. Of course, I have Minecrafty and stuff. Um, I don't know if you were here for the last Minecraft stream, but what we had to do was we had to actually upgrade the server. And the reason we had to upgrade the server was because they came out with a new patch, a completely new version, I almost fell, of Minecraft. And it's got all these ocean updates, which are kind of cool. Oh, excellent. Well, I'll leave this here for him. And I'll leave this here. And I'll leave this here. Oh, I do have some spruce planks. Good. And I'll leave you some gravel. And some gunpowder. He always wants gunpowder. Yes. I'll leave him some sugar cane. And some andesite. I'm going to keep a cobblestone. I could always use cobblestone. I always use. He needs cobblestone too. I'm sure of it. So I'm just gonna load up his inventory with all my junk that I don't want. This is what we call offloading the junk you don't want on your son because he'll find a way to use it. Maybe. <laughs> this is called me being lazy and storing my junk somewhere that it where it probably isn't needed. Or wanted. And me not caring about that. That's what it's called. Have you been playing anything uh, great recently, Sun Warrior? Or you've uh, mostly been... Just hanging out. I know that you had some issues... At one point, didn't you? Not sure if it was your computer. If it was your... Um, what do you call it? Your um, Xbox or something? Ben taking a break breaks are good I've actually been doing extra streams uh, in the mornings on the uh, death metal Kyle stuff um, I've been doing extra streams to fill the time for him so on Wednesday mornings I need more sticks than that on Wednesday mornings, I normally don't stream. I normally, um... Oh, the TV died. That's right. Oh, but you did get a new one. Nice. Nice. I'm, I'm happy for you. New TV time is generally good, good times. The times when you can get a new TV are awesome times. Because then you can justify it. The minute your old TV dies, you can then justify it and say, oh, well, you know what? It died. 
And generally speaking, when I upgrade my TV, I also use it as an excuse to upgrade, um, you know, whatever disc-based player I need to connect to the TV. And what I mean by that is, you know, back in the day of DVD, it was a DVD player. Back in the n and now it's Blu-ray player. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably, whenever we upgrade the TV, we're probably gonna upgrade to a four. I would say I want to proactively upgrade to a 4K TV, and then upgrade. Um, to a 4K capable Blu-ray player. And that way, you know, I'm ready for the next phase of evolution. Because it, it just makes sense. If you're going to be replacing a TV, then you might as well replace your Blu-ray player too. HD DVD. <laughs> yeah, actually, I've read some cool stuff about HD DVD, like, um stuff that you can actually turn the laser from an HD DVD player into a cutting laser of some kind. Ow, that was needless. So that's interesting. But yeah, HD DVD, uh, that's why I, well actually I didn't have any need for a TV when, when that whole debate was coming out, um, we were not in the HD realm for our television. We basically use stuff mostly until it dies. Mostly. Mostly. We mostly use stuff until it dies. Mostly. Name that movie. Can you name the movie I was referencing with that quote? Blu-rays are a magical thing. The only thing is, like, I question when you start getting into 4K, does it reach the point where it's so ultra real that it's beyond what our senses can naturally perceive? And what I mean by that is that these shows are captured at frame rates that the human eye could never perceive. You know, you have, when you film something at, like, 60 frames a second or whatever, you... You know, the the human mind really can't perceive that. Because in real life, things are not... Yeah, the eyes can only see so many pixels. And so you reach a point where basically... Hang on. Is this iron? No, that's stone. I want iron. No, oh, that's the most I can make. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Nice. Swap that one out. Don't need it. Actually, I'm going to put that one there. Because now I've got to make all the torches. All the torches. I want all the torches. What is this? A lever. I don't care about levers. I care about torches. Do, 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 making torches. Yeah, and I think that it actually gets to the point where your brain sees the image as something quote unquote hyper real. Like it's so pure and crisp it's more than your eyes would perceive because think about it, like the glare from the sun let's just take that for example so you go on one of these glaciers okay uh where the the discovery channel goes and films these beautiful breathtaking scenes okay so first off you go to one of these glaciers you're not going to see the color the same way that it's being presented on the screen why well because it was color balanced in post-production it's not it's not the same color that you would see if you were there. And in fact, you'd be pretty much blinded by the, the light of the sun that you'd have to wear sunglasses. And so the glare from that would be insane. Just like at night, there's no way the human eye can perceive what these shows show at night. And in some ways, that's a good thing because then, you know, we get to see things that we never see. But in other ways, it's a bad thing because it's, giving us a perception of the world that isn't real very much in the same way any television program does there's a 
I forgot there was a program back in the day called the Zen TV program. It's a it was a web based experiment, and here what it would say to do is this: just try watching one of your favorite shows without the sound on, and then you realize kind of how annoying it is because stuff switches around so much and you have no context. Then they said try for a news show counting the amount of technical edits within the show. So that means every time a camera angle changes, every time um, every time there's a banner at the bottom, every time there's a graphic, try counting those things. Because if you think about it, every one of those things is something that you wouldn't see in real life. With a sports event, you don't have infinite different angles to look at. You have the sport event to look at. But with television, we we end up being so much more engaged. So much more engaged. Because we're more engaged because we're faked or we're lied to about what the experience is. The experiment, uh, the experiment, uh, experiment, the experience of going to a game of some kind, of a, a sports game of some kind, is completely different than what it is on TV. I went to a sports game once. I went to a baseball game. And it was with a group of people. And a bunch of the people sat inside and watched other sports games or the game in question on TV. Now, this isn't a pro league. This was a minor league. But they still had, like, announcers and they still have cameras that are around. But I was like, what's wrong with you? Go outside and watch the actual game. It was hot and humid. I don't care. Go out and watch the game. You don't go to a baseball game to sit inside and watch the baseball game on TV. And unfortunately, some of the realism of 4K and some of this stuff even, yes, dare I say, with computers and streaming, ends up creating this false idea of what entertainment is. Because it's not real. And that's okay. Because, you know, entertainment doesn't need to be real. But it does give you a pause to think about what we're expecting from reality. Ah, ah, I bet you you didn't think a streamer could get so deep. But we do dive deep here at the Steamworks because we need, you know, oil and coal to be able to power the steam turbines. And, you know, to boil water. But yeah, I mean, it's a thing. All right, so Mini Dash clearly is not around. I don't want to... Why is it when I wake up out of bed, I, it, it puts me outside? I will never understand that. There are times we have to dig deep on the Steamworks here in order to... in some ways amuse ourselves and in other ways to understand society. Oh no, trying to understand society. That's that's dangerous. Well, also to understand how broken society can be sometimes. And that's not even getting political because I don't want to get political politics. I'll just quote some famous comedian. I don't know what that comedian's name is, but I will quote the comedian in saying, Whoa, where'd that tunnel come from? Uh, no, that's not what they would say. Yeah, poly, politics is uh, from the Latin poly meaning many and ticks meaning blood-sucking parasites. This cavern was not here before. I don't know where this cavern came from. This is the thing with Minecraft. It does weird things like this. It generates... new places. Oh, I hear you, skeleton. I hear water. Aha! There's nothing here. 
mean, there's clearly a skeleton nearby, but there's nothing here. That is good. But, yeah, I mean, it's a funny world we live in. A funny, awesome world where people can share their gaming experiences that they used to have on couches. You know, you would go to your friend's house and they had the latest and greatest game and you didn't. So you'd go to their house and you would watch them you would watch them play, which is sort of kind of I don't know if I want to be down here all of a sudden. I'm gonna light this side up. At least. Or play MP games. MP games. Multiplayer games. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's totally a thing, too. Like, Unreal Tournament back in the day. Oh, yeah. Yep. Where you used to do LAN parties. Or you would do the, um... You would do the Xbox games where you could have four people on one screen. That was like... Or, later on, when you could cook two Xboxes together. That was... That was crazy. You could have up to eight people playing Halo at once. That was that was like the next generation there. That was awesome. Let's see, I'm trying to make my situation better by lighting things up a bit. But I have a feeling, given how large in scope that is, That that's not gonna work. Ah, here comes a zombie. Hi, zombie. I'm gonna kill you. Come back up. I got you. I kill you. I'll take the experience. I don't really care so much for the um for the zombie meat. Zombie meat is. <gasps> here comes another. Come. Come, zombie. Come this way. Yes. Right into my trap. It is my zombie trap. Zombie trap. I trap you. Get into bed. I'm not even at home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So now... <laughs> now that you want to sleep... <laughs> He's dying. What? Why does him dying have anything to do with me going to sleep? Like, I, I, that, I don't understand. The PS2, yes, split screen. Yes, yes, yes. Those are good old days, yes. Um, I have no idea where I'm coming out here. How am I gonna get into bed? Hi, fish. Get out of my way. Because mini dash. He's suffocated in the wall. Alright. Hi, creeper. I'm gonna... Ha! That was good. He's suffocated in a wall. <laughs> uh, how did you pull that off? Also, time up. Yep, time's up. Well, and I think that streaming has definitely replaced some of that. But I think it also allows you to not have a certain aspect of it, which was you're not going to you're going to trash talk your friends, but you have a sense that they're goofing around versus when you're online and somebody starts trash talking you, you or, or trolling you, you have no context as to whether or not they're being serious or not. So like somebody told me in Dark Souls this morning, you need to jump off this ledge. Well, I died after falling off that ledge the day before. So it's like, well, wait a minute. You're telling me to jump off a ledge. How do I know that you're not trolling me? And uh, luckily they weren't. Anyway, 
we need to wrap things up because Mini Dash is out of time, which means that it's dinner time. Dinner time. That being said, Sun Warrior, I will be back on tonight. Uh, again on Death Metal Kyle's channel with some more Dark Souls. That is going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern Time or Midnight UTC for those that are in the UK. And um, it's my next to last stream on DMK's channel, I believe. So that's um, that's sad, but I've appreciated every moment of getting to stream on his channel. I considered it an honor. Look at the kelp. Kelpity kelp. And sudden, and and sudden, <laughs> sunken treasures. Uh, anyway, I just want to thank you again, Sun Warrior, for all the time that you spend with me and uh, modding and whatnot. It's uh, it's really appreciated. In the meantime, I do need to be dashing off. Thank you for being so dashing and joining me, and we will see you next time. Thanks very much. <laughs>